<laughs> it's time for Wise Guys Wednesday. We are talking about scanning tunneling microscopes. That's right. Paul Quiat explains how it works. Take a look. Hey, everyone. Good morning. Uh, nice to see everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Today is kind of a big day for me on Wise Guy. Uh, if I'm counting correctly, I think this is my 50th Wise Guy episode. Uh, so I'm going to try and use it to pull together some of the things we were talking about in the last several weeks. So uh, quite a few weeks ago, we talked about uh, how this little lighter works and the fact that it's got a certain crystal in here that when I compress it, uh, puts it makes a high voltage and then high voltage that spark is able to ignite the uh, the lighter fluid and that material is just to remind you called a uh, piezoelectric material so if I put a force on it if I compress it it makes a voltage or the reverse if I put a voltage on it it will either can uh, expand or contract and we said that I could use that then in fact, to make very small, precise motions of things. So, for example, if I have a small one of these piezoelectric crystals and I put on, say, a millivolt, uh, it will change its length by uh, maybe a couple angstroms. So that's the scale of a single atom. Okay, so let's put that on the back burner for just a second. We'll come back to that in a couple minutes. And uh, remind ourselves what we were talking about then last time, which was the phenomenal phenomenon of tunneling, uh, this kind of a weird uh, quantum phenomenon where if I have a particle, so this this particle maybe it's an electron and it's it's nominally trapped in in this atom, so it doesn't have enough energy to escape the atom. Uh, but we said the quantum mechanical quantum mechanically, it's possible that it could just kind of disappear here and then reappear and maybe be you know, with some other atom instead. Okay, even though classically it doesn't have enough energy to actually jump the gap. So that phenomenon we said was called tunneling. And the reason that that happens, we said, is that the electron acts like a wave. So here's the wave of the electron, and a little bit of it can tunnel through this barrier. So even though the electron doesn't have enough energy to get over the barrier, a little bit of it can tunnel through. And I want to ask what's happening in that gap. So the gap where the electron doesn't want to be. So for example, it wants to be on the left side, that's say a metal. And it may be if I bring another metal up close to it, the electron wouldn't mind being in that other metal, but it doesn't want to be in the gap. And this is where it has to do this, this phenomenon called tunneling. So the, the red curve is showing the, what we would call the wave function of the electron. This is what quantum mechanics tells us where the electron well, would like to be. And we see that that wave function decays exponentially in this gap. And what that means is that if I want to know the likelihood that an electron will tunnel from one material into another one, if I change that gap, if I make that gap bigger, that probability of tunneling is going to drop exponentially. So exponentially means that if there's a 10% chance to tunnel across a one nanometer gap, there's only a 1% chance to tunnel across a two nanometer gap. And if it were three nanometers, then it would only be a tenth of a percent. So it, it, it's very, very sensitive on uh, how big the gap is. And I can use that to make a, a basically a photograph of, of sorts uh, of the surface of a, of, a, of some material. So here's how that would work. So I have some my microscope tip it's very sharp. It's basically like a single atom thick. And if I bring it close enough to the surface of this other uh, layer that I'm looking at, then I can get electrons to tunnel across. And I'm basically going to drag this tip across, almost like you would drag a needle across a, a phonograph record. And the tip, then I'll try to, by, by watching the tip go up and down, I can figure out then what's the shape of the surface. So let me just show that again quickly here. Um, so let's say this is the surface that I'm trying to look at and pretend that these are all, uh, these are like uh, metal atoms. And I'm going to have my, my uh, microscope tip, my scanning tunneling microscope tip. And if it's close to the surface, I'll get a lot of electrons tunneling. And if it's far away from the surface like it is here, I won't get very many. And the way I'm actually going to uh, run this then is I'm going to keep the distance constant. That will give me a constant tunneling current between the tip and the, and the substrate here. And I'm just going to keep it constant. And then as long as I know how much I'm moving my stylus up and down, then I'll know what the surface is that I'm looking at. Okay, so that's exactly what happens in a uh, scanning tunneling microscope as shown here. And then the only question is, well, how do I actually precisely control 
where that tunneling tip is, how much it's moving, because I'm, it's only going to be needing to move by, you know, of the order of an angstrom or less if I'm trying to look at individual atoms. Well, the trick is I'm just going to use one of those piezoelectric materials that I had. I said if I could just change the voltage by a millivolt or so, I can move this up and down very, very precisely. And that enables then to make these amazing uh, images uh, basically by scanning the, the material underneath the tip and, and letting the tip go up and down to monitor uh, what the surface of that looks like. Again, a lot like a phonograph needle, but you're not actually touching. Uh, and in this case, for example, I can see this is looking at a gold surface. The little bright spots here are the individual uh, gold atoms uh, where the electrons are concentrated on top of those atoms. Okay, so that's a a little bit more of a technical discussion than we normally have, but I just wanted to kind of make the connection between some of the things we've looked at, you know, something simple like how your lighter works and show how that enables us eventually to make these amazingly precise uh, photographs, which are extremely useful in, uh, in science and engineering. Okay, great to talk with you, and I hope you guys have a great week. Bye-bye. And Jack has your forecast next. We'll be right back.